boom. That's me ripping corners. You see how fast that was? If I wouldn't have blown up both knees and broke my ankle, it probably would have been even faster. But we can talk about that another day. Today, we're talking about how you can get better in the corners. So in Snowcross, what they say is jump for show, corner for dough. And that holds true when it comes to the trail riding or any of the corners that you do. So you gotta think about that. When I say corner for dough, if that race comes with your buddy and you say, hey, from stop to stop, you're buying lunch, that's for the corner and pay, what is it? Corner for dough, that's what it was. So what I've done is I've compiled a few different techniques that will help you corner better in a day. These are different things that I've learned over the years from racing snowcross, cross country, and doing all the different things in snowmobiles that I have. To go through these techniques, you practice them, you can be as confident in the corners as wrestler Ric Flair. Now let the fun begin. Woo! Leaning. So leaning is the thing that helps you go faster around the turn. And what that is, is essentially you're offsetting that outward pull of the machine trying to go out and tip up. And you're counterbalancing that to keep the inside ski down, allowing you to go faster. So uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. The leaning and one of them, and the most common I would say is the, the hooked lean, which is where you keep your feet in the stirrups, outside foot is hooked in there, and you literally, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep your toes hooked and pull the machine. You know, the goal is to not have your outside foot on the running board, because you don't want to be pushing on that outside, helping that outward energy that's trying to tip you over. So, but if you're hooked and you're pulling that over, that helps keep that inside ski down. So unhooked is a little bit more advanced because when you're doing a regular hooked corner, you eventually run out of leg. And you run out of leg a lot faster when you're about the size of a sixth grader like myself. You, when you unhook, you're going from four points touching to only three. And that brings instability, which kind of feels a little bit weird when you first start doing it. But a tip is to take your leg, the foot that you unhook, and actually pinch the seat with your leg, so you kind of sandwich it using your knee, grab onto that seat and that kind of holds you in place and makes you feel a little bit more stable when you're doing an unhooked corner. So the Rossi is, is kind of a one-off technique that I developed back when I first started racing. And the issue I had was I'm a smaller guy, I couldn't lean near as hard as some of the taller riders, which means I couldn't go as fast around the turn. So I needed to learn how to do an unhooked corner without bouncing all over the place and without fatiguing myself so bad by mid-race where I couldn't even hang on anymore. So I developed the Rossi, which is essentially you move your foot back behind you and it drops your knee down kind of below the running board. And what it does is it kind of creates a mechanical bind your knee does where it holds you from going back at all. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to use any energy, I should say, to keep you forward on the machine, to keep pressure on the skis. And it also just allows you to kind of sit there and the only energy you have to do is literally just turn the handlebars. So it's it has its advantages, but it also has its disadvantages. So it's something that, you know, I wouldn't spend a lot of time unless you plan on doing some racing or, or if you really want to pursue, uh, or you really have struggles, I should say, with fatigue in the corners or something like that. Another element that you have to deal with a snowmobile is you've got a thumb throttle as the throttle. Now the issue with the thumb throttle is it's fine when you're sitting behind it, but when you come into a right hand turn and you go to lean and you turn the handlebars and it starts getting closer to me, you get to a point where your wrist will not bend far enough to be able to continue to hold on to the handlebars, lean and hit the throttle. So the technique that you wanna use is you wanna roll your hand. So you literally begin to come into the turn using your thumb and you can roll your hand around and literally use the fingertips 
to run the throttle. While you're in that right hand turn, as you exit the turn, if you slowly rotate it back, you can do it without even feeling any, any throttle change or RPM change. And it takes a little bit to get used to doing that at first, but once you do it, you instantly feel more control in the corners where you're not dealing with tipping up in the turns because you're able to counter that with that extra leaning that you're able to do with the rolled right hand turns. Smooth throttle control is the key to a successful corner. When you go and you chop the throttle and you hit it hard, front end pulls up, the skis get light, you lose kind of all of that steering input which causes you to push, then you let off, skis drop down, you get a ton of ski pressure, then you run into rear traction troubles where the back end can slide, and then you get back on the gas and it's just this re repetition of forward back causing instability to the front and back the whole way around. To remedy that is to keep a more consistent throttle or to be very smooth accelerating or decelerating going in and around the turns. Weight transfer. So weight transfer is directly affected by throttle control. Like I said, if you accelerate hard, front end gets light, you let off, front end gets heavy, and that's what weight transfer is. It's all about transferring weight front, back, left to right, depending on if you're cornering, accelerating, or braking. In a car, there's three inputs. You have your throttle, you have your brake, and you have your steering, and that's how you control the way that the car makes it through the turn. With a snowmobile, you have to add the body position to that element. You know, you in a car, you can't move your body around to position, but with a snowmobile, you can move yourself forward. You can move yourself harder off to the side, like we talked about with leaning. You can move yourself back to get the front end light. And that's one of the elements that gets a lot of people in trouble because if you sit in a more comfortable backward sitting uh, position, it causes the front end to wheelie or to be light when you're going into that turn. And that sometimes is why it causes you to push through that turn or vice versa. If you're sitting kind of neutral when you go into the turn, you don't lean, that's when you get that inside ski lift. So weight transfer is a big one um, in trying to get yourself through the turn effectively. Oversteer is when you have so much front end traction that the back end kicks around. You know, a lot of times you don't find that in snowmobiling simply because the track is so big and you have so much traction in the rear, it's harder to get the back to come around. But in those situations when you get an icy turn or you're on a plowed road, you'll feel where the oversteer is. The back end will start kicking around. And the thing you need to focus on is when that kicks around is counter steering to make sure that you get the skis pointed in the direction you're heading so that the sled doesn't do a complete donut and spin around and you know toss you off in the weeds or whatever it's gonna do. Your big one with the snowmobile because it has so much traction in the rear compared to the front end with the skis is when you're accelerating the front end wants to get light and you want to get you get a understeer situation where the sled just wants to keep pushing and if you jump off the throttle then all the suspension drops on the front springs compress when they release it pushes the sled back up causing you to have more push in the turn so the big thing is just being smooth with your inputs so that the sled stays planted and you have good traction both front and rear so how to remedy that is by dragging the brake. If you hit the brake a little bit, it plants the front end down, puts more weight on the front. If you move your body position forward and kind of have it over the front, dragging the brake, it makes that front end bite and allows you to carve through the turn. So that concludes how to corner better in a day. Those are some of the main tips that I think have helped me progress over the years. And it took a lot of time of riding trails, racing cross country, snow cross, all the other things to kind of learn them and, and I don't want to say perfect them, but get better at them. And that'll be the same thing for you. You know, go out there, try them, and see if you can notice you getting better in the turns. So if you guys have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to reply to them. And outside of that, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.